If you are listening right now and you want to be a speaker, turn the volume up. Pitching, raising money. This is such an art that needs to be taught to everybody. We're not where we want to go yet. So we're in this liminal, like unknowing, uncomfortable space between nowhere and not yet. That is a really hard place to be. You are not being 100% authentic. You don't know who you are yet. I think that just scared everyone. This is just all me searching, searching, searching for something outside of myself. Really, it was always inside of me. I just had to wake myself back up. Every time you get on social media, if you're wondering why your program is not selling, your content is not hitting. It's not clear. I don't go, oh no, imposter syndrome again. I go, ooh, I've made it. What was once hard becomes easy. You have to go and do hard things again. That's the secret ingredient. Judy, welcome to Earn Your Happy. Thank you so much for coming on. So good to be here. I'm staring at the palm trees and <gasps> Camelback Mountain. It's a whole vibe. You've got a good, this is a good view. I'm <laughs> also good, good looking view. at my, you know, podcast team, which You're is looking a, at all your a, books, amazing books view and the books. Yeah. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have you on yeah, because thanks. we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics. Yeah. Actually, a couple of my favorite mm -hmm. topics. Fear. Okay. Public speaking. Mm. I think that just scared everyone. Yeah. So keep listening, people. I just got butterflies yeah, exactly. and I'm doing it, so. The anxiety has come up for everyone. We just hit everyone in the whole world and what they're afraid of. Yeah. Um, but you did write a book yeah. called Fear is My Homeboy. You do make 80% of your revenue being a professional speaker yeah. on massive stages. Yeah. You teach public speaking. You are kind of the amplifier mm. of different people who want to learn how to public speak. So let's start with the fear topic. Let's mm. just let's let's go back to your book quick and just talk yeah. about the fear topic. Where did that come from? Why is fear such a big topic for you? Well, I think if you are alive and you have a heartbeat in mm. your chest and you are not a machine or a robot, you are going to feel fear and you're going to have to face it. And I think we have to begin with a conversation around like the F word, not the F word. That y'all think we're going to talk oh, about. I like that word but too. I love that. I love that <laughs> F word. This is an F word I don't like. Um, and it's the word fearless. Mm. I take issue with it on a lot of levels because I think it's what causes so many of us so much pain because totally. it's so marketed, so merchandised. Like it's movies and books and motivational t-shirts and jewelry and bumpers. Like everybody's telling us to go be fearless. I know. Like, and then the person that feels fear goes, oh, but I feel fear, so I'm not fearless, so therefore I'm trash, yeah. and I'm doing it all wrong. And I'm here to say, can we just lay down that armor and understand that if we are afraid, number one, you're probably doing it right. Mm. It means you're on the precipice of something big, like some change. And number two, I'd like to remind everyone listening that if you were really fearless, mm. you'd A, probably be a sociopath, or because, dead. Or, or dead. <laughs> or you'd never pay your taxes. Mm. You'd eat poisonous foods on purpose. You'd do all kinds of crazy things because you're fearless, right? Mm. So I don't know. There's a book called, have you read Big Magic by yes. Elizabeth? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's this line in Big Magic where she goes, listen, the only fearless people I know are five-year-olds and sociopaths. Yeah. So no, babe. The goal isn't fearless. The goal is brave. So I'm kind of always playing games with my fear. I think I'm sort of, and I think we should be on this mission to be brave. And like, how do we every day kind of play with that a little bit mm -hmm. how do we flex that muscle like courage is a muscle mm -hmm. and just like our muscle muscles if we don't use it like how do we expect to get that is so true braver right or, or better or stronger so I play these games like every day where I, I call them fear experiments mm -hmm. so I'm always like okay today how am I flexing the muscle? How am I increasing my tolerance for pain? Mm. So maybe it is putting my face on, face on social if I have it for a minute. Lori, maybe it's like, okay, today I'm wearing red lipsticks. I've never worn red lipstick. Oh, I'm gonna like yeah. wear red lipstick to the grocery store. Maybe it's, okay, uh, I'm gonna say yes when Lori Harder calls me to go be on mm -hmm. the Earn Your, Your Happy podcast, right? It could be something as big as that or stepping on stage or leaving a relationship or moving to a new city. But I really think it's the small everyday thing. Like mm -hmm. those little things, like those moments every day where we can kind of flex that muscle that most of us miss that actually make us brave. Mm -hmm. The sales call, the email, the asking for you want, the boundary, 
the not looking at your phone before bed, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, The creating before you consume. These are all flexes that end up making us really brave. So I think the goal is 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 not fearless i think the goal is brave and that's like mm. step one mm, i love that <laughs> step one yeah so judy and i are starting a t-shirt line that just says shit your pants and do it anyway <laughs> like like fuel yeah. here <laughs> pop your pants it's yeah. gonna be okay it's gonna be great congratulations i almost have on stage for real legitimately yeah. twice twice oh God. you can't be a speaker and not have a poop no. story and listen i always <laughs> say truth i always say to the speakers who are like i'm not nervous i'm like you're a either lying yeah or you're you're not talking about something important. You're, yeah. <laughs> you, or you need to get out of the game. Like, you clearly don't care anymore. But I, yeah. I am been, like you. Like, I have been doing this on stage professionally. And the same, there are so many moments of just I mean, like, oh, my tummy's in a knot. Yeah. And my heart's racing. But cool. Because Lori, like, what's the alternative to that? Like, we're not alive. We're not no. here. Like, we're not feeling what we're supposed to feel. And like, think about it. It's your body preparing yourself to do something extraordinary. Absolutely. And Mm -hmm. what a gift. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you, source, God, universe, whatever your thing is. Like, thank you for the gift of this. Thank you for the feeling because I've obviously been given it to Mm -hmm. prepare myself for what I'm about to go do. So we can use it. I love that you said, you know, what else but this? Like, without these feelings, we're not alive. And I actually, Mm. it's funny you say that because I actually tap into that before I go on stage when Mm. I'm so nervous. Because I still, I still can get, it just, it depends. Especially if there's money that I'm being paid. Because you want to deliver. I still can get so nervous. Yeah. Look, I've heard it all. Everyone's like, oh, you're thinking too much about yourself. I'm actually not. At that point, I have prayed 65 times. All I want to do is serve. But I still so feel true. sick to my stomach because I want, I just want to perform well. Yes. It means you care. Yeah. It means you care about your work. You care about your audience. I said to my husband just the other day, I go, listen, honey, if I stop getting nervous, like get me out of the game. Yeah. Like it's time. True. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't mind it. I think a lot of people want to figure out how to like, how do I beat my stage fright? Like mm-hmm. how do I get over my fear? And you know, if you think about public speaking, what is it, Lori? Like the stat is like 98% of people would rather literally die mm-hmm. than get on stage. And you know, listen, if you're, you're, hearing us right now you're listening to two people i make my living doing it Lori speaks on oh my gosh you almost these days you're on as many stages if not more than i am Girl, i don't know about that but i'm on this. stages <laughs> you're on a lot of stages and guys maybe the stage is your phone maybe it's mm-hmm. a podcast exactly. maybe it's a pitch maybe it's a date maybe it's an interview maybe it's like you've got to go talk to your mother-in-law about something that's that's deep a stage and intense. that's a mm-hmm. stage mm-hmm. so um i think there's a few things you you can do i don't know about you but for me like Here's, this is big. I don't know if you do this. I'm curious. So for me, like specifically in the hours leading up to the talk, Mm. like the night before, you know, no booze, keep it clean. I don't like clients will want to take me out to dinner and do things if I'm on site for an event. I like, I keep my energy right and tight. My Mm. aura really clean and pristine as fly as a photograph in Vogue (laughs) magazine, baby. Like I keep it lifted, right? But then the hours, like if you think one hour, two hours before the talk, like I don't pick up no social media, Mm. no email. Like there was one time I picked up my phone, Lori, and I saw an email and I mean, it jacked. The audience was probably none the wiser, but I mean, I had a horrible time up there. Mm. Um, Never again. Or you see one person or one comment and it sends you. So keep it clean. Like I, I really no social, no email. It's gratitude. It's prayers. It's power posing these days with like queen Mm -hmm. herbie and my like airpods it was unstoppable by sia Mm -hmm. for years so like get your get your aura right so that you can take your power back and love on the audience and give to the audience Mm -hmm. all that you know you were meant to give them because there's no coincidence you're on that stage you were you were put on that stage Mm -hmm. and in that room for a reason right so i always kind of just try to keep my energy clean i don't know if you do any have any rituals before you get on stage but those are some of mine like (laughs) trying not to poop my pants right yeah also just like prayer and faith and music and removing distractions so I can just be in the energy of it in a good power pose that always helps me Mm -hmm. big time those are definitely mine too prayer power pose I've learned to not look at messages because yeah yeah, it can just I even just customer service stuff like what am I doing why am I why am I looking at this right now like your brain gets so distracted trying to think of some other oh I I definitely um Sometimes I'll invite in like my younger self and let her say how proud she is of me. I'll be like, oh my God, I know you're nervous, but this is what we dreamed of and we're here. Um, And that'll just really bring me back to 
how yes. incredible of a moment that is. And also sometimes I'll think about me sitting in, cause you know, you started with, I'm sure being at events, watching speakers all the time. Like I'll let myself go sit in that chair and just be like, oh, we're going to talk to them. We're going to breathe life into them and let them yes. know this is possible. Oh, my gosh. Like, I oh, love that best. so much. <laughs> and that is an energetic, big old juicy message. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I love that you said this about inviting uh, younger Lori. Mm. So one of the things that has really helped me in the last couple of years is I went through an exercise. I went through a phase of, of comparing myself a little bit. Oh, I've never done you that. You know, have you ever done this? <laughs> Where you just get into your head and you oh, think, yeah. oh, I mean, God. this morning, what? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Thank you, Jesus. So he's back in the room. So, okay. So I went through this phase of like specifically um, with a particular performer and I kind of, <laughs> I love that we have our people. I'm like, okay, who's on your list? Just kidding. We're not saying it. <laughs> no names will be said, but a particular performer. And um, I, had lo I, I had gotten so deep into comparison that I started like catfishing myself, <laughs> like meaning like this specific, I can't even believe I'm telling this story, but it's real. So I I'm love just going to tell it. Yeah. Like this specific performer, I was like, oh, that's it. This is like, she's got the stages, the vibes, mm. all of it. I'm like, and she always wore Valentinos on stage. Okay. And I'm like, perfect. I need Valentinos. So I'm going to go get all the Valentinos. I'm going to wear all the Valentinos. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lori. And I'm like, this is it. This is going to be the fix. And now I've made it because I stand on stage and I'm corporate Barbie and I am wearing my Valentinos and yeah. it's magic right meanwhile your girl hated the valentinos was in pain wearing the valentinos found herself wearing shoes uh, she didn't even like to appease yeah. someone if she was being honest with herself she probably didn't even want to really be mm. like to appease strangers who she didn't even really want to work with and mm. i had gotten and that's what i call kind of like catfishing yourself a little yeah. bit so I, so i got lost for myself and so coming back to little judy one of the exercises Thankfully, I'm back home to mm -hmm. myself and I, I've taken two years of, of work to do that. And one of the very first questions I asked myself to like crack open, like yeah. who I've become and really who I was always born to be was someone asked me, what were you doing when you were eight, year old, eight years old? Mm -hmm. Tell me everything eight-year-old Judy was doing, eating, listening to, playing, vibing with, being. What was she doing alone on her waterbed? In her <laughs> you had a waterbed, you lucky in, duck. If you're from the 90s, holler at your girl. 1994, I graduated high school. So if you're with me, you know. But yes. like, yeah, I had the waterbed. Like, what were you <laughs> so doing cool. in your waterbed <laughs> with all the flamingos on your wall? Debbie Gibson, Menudo. Like, give it all to I'm me. right so there. <laughs> okay, so I wrote this list down and I was like, whoa. And then the and then the exercise was get it all down. And it took me a few weeks. And then it was like, okay, is she anywhere mm. in your life right now? Because when you are eight to 10 years old, like this is before the world gets a hold of you mm. and tells you to sit down and color in the lines and be corporate Barbie and be in the box and wear this and do that. And, you know, you start to worry about like, oh my other people, oh my God, what are they going to think? And I could never. And so I just going to, I'm just going to chill. I'm yeah. just going to stay right here in the box, comfy and cozy and follow the line. And then you do this for so long that you end up losing sight of like who you are mm. in your core. And what I have found is that that, that, that eight-year-old you, those things you do different, mm. that's the secret ingredient. So you got the waterbed back. So I don't have a waterbed yet. <laughs> coming but i have a sleep number it's pretty that's pretty dramatic yeah. it makes you sound like i'm 85 <laughs> can we edit that one out <laughs> no we're keeping that because keep now i need a sleep number so <laughs> super 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 cool here uh, but no water bed yet um okay. i don't think i could talk hubby into that but like guess what's back <laughs> mixtapes music lyrics mm. poetry rap like spoken word mm. um graffiti yeah. uh, hip-hop uh boom boxes uh bright colors neon like this energy mm. of little lowercase the mtv vj the downtown judy brown that i mm. wanted to be like all of this sort of energy from the 90s uh is coming back into my life because it's always been who i am mm. and so now it's like okay how do i wake her up and give her a seat at the board table mm. regularly when I'm writing these speeches, when I'm making these, um, you know, pieces of poetry or writing lyrics or collaborating or 
creating podcast episodes or the next book I'm working on. Like, where's eight-year-old Judy in that mm. conversation? Because that's who I am in my core. And how do I just find a way to uh, make that person connect mm. um, with the world at a larger scale? Okay, let's talk about this yeah. because... You know, we're talking about fear right now. And I think in the beginning for us to, if if I was to start thinking that before getting on a stage, which I really wish we could have backed up and added more of that in from the mm. beginning, which is the goal. So let's go yeah. there. Let's go there. So someone has some big things right now that is that are really scaring them. They have some hard emails to write cool. or some scary emails yeah. to write. They have a stage that they want to be on. They have a podcast that they're trying to get on. It happens. Yeah. They get a Yes. Now here's where all the shit comes in. Like the yes, great. Your highest self says yes. You know you're supposed to do it. It's coming yeah. to the next level. And now here's where all of the fear takes yeah. you down until the day that you do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> and how do we weave ourselves in from the beginning, mm. even though we feel like that's the stupidest thing we could do yes. because we need to be everyone else but us? Yes. Okay. I think the first thing we need to understand, I think when we're talking about fear mm -hmm. in life, business, entrepreneurship, friendships, relationships, yes. it's inevitable. We're going to face it all day, every day. So we can either be a victim to it or we can be a badass. Mm -hmm. I think knowledge is power. So one of the biggest lessons I learned about fear, and this is a Stephen Pressfield, tell me you've read War of Art. It's I my favorite you know. ever. Oh my God. Four times a year, y'all, if you have not read War of Art, mm -hmm. Go put that in your shopping cart right now. It's a life changer. And one of the things Stephen writes in that book is the conversation we have to have right now. Fear is always strongest at the finish line. Mm. So the second you walk into the room, put your foot onto the stage, uh, just about click send on the email, mm -hmm. you're about to pick up the phone or put your face on social media. Like in those moments, right before you are seconds away from doing the thing, fear comes in hot. Mm -hmm. Fear brings all of its friends to your party. Things like perfectionism and procrastination and self-doubt and self-sabotage and imposter syndrome. Now, when I see and feel imposter syndrome, which I do regularly, Lori, I, I don't go, oh no, imposter syndrome again. I go, ooh, I've made it. Mm. Cool. I'm doing something right. Because if it's here, it means fear's here. And it means I'm about to change. And I'm about to grow. And I'm about to get braver and bolder and bigger. And fear hates that. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, you don't need fear as much. So fear wants you stuck, safe, and just the same. So I have sort of flipped the script on it a little bit. Now when I feel like, Lori, park in my car in front of your house, you don't think for a second that I was like, all right, <sighs> really? Are you sure you know? Are you sure you got enough to say? Are you sure your stories mm. are real and relevant enough? And, you know... And instead of going, and so when that happened in the car, right before I shut the door on the Bronco, I went, oh, she's here. <laughs> cool. I'm right where I need to be. Mm. Because if I'm afraid, I'm doing it right. And so fear isn't the enemy. Comfort is. Like complacency is. Like I need you to move faster, be less perfect. I need you to move. I need you to holler at your dreams. Like we got to be the verb. And so it's, it's for me a game of movement because I don't want to be the same this year as I was last year, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's a lot of ways fear tries to stop us from evolving and growing and changing. And that growth is the game. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, the, the biggest answer to the question, is just like that knowledge. Like when you feel the fear, instead of going, oh God, I feel the fear, feel a sense of knowing that aha mm -hmm. growth. Okay. Aha. I'm alive. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh, I'm probably doing it right. Mm -hmm. And so this is where, you know, I'm, I, I tap into faith. I tap into something bigger. I tap in to myself and the trust I have and who I feel like I was born to be. And the more you do that, the easier it gets, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't go away, but it gets easier. Ooh, let's Does talk. that help? I mean, oh my God, of course. No, I'm right. I'm literally so in it that I'm like, Lori, think of your next question. No, it's <laughs> so good. I'm, you're taking me it's right intuitive. back to so many moments. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about a couple things that fear has. Um, one of the places that I have felt fear either really sabotage me or places where fear gets really enticing to do things that can really destroy what you're trying mm, to go after. Sabotage. So let's yeah. talk about the few times where maybe you send the email. You face mm. the fear. Okay. You okay. face the fear. You say, yes, you're yeah. doing the thing. 
you have the speaking gig. I'll explain like two things, what I'm trying to talk about so you can understand what I'm saying. Um, okay. So I've sent the scary email to somebody yes. where I'm doing an ask and it's like a couple days later and they haven't responded Ooh. because I forget that I don't know yet yeah. that busy people yes. don't even check their own email. Yes. I don't know this. I think they're me and they're checking for opportunities every 30, every five seconds. 30 seconds. And so yeah. I don't get a response in the yeah. first week. Mm -hmm. And so I maybe send another email or I don't get a response in the second week or I don't send another response at all because I start saying you're an idiot. They saw this email mm -hmm. immediately. You're not important. Feel you. Don't ever send an email again. You dumbass. Yeah. And so there's one version of fear where you maybe don't send the email again. Or you either oversend things or you write a sentence like, I know maybe you've been seeing my emails, mm. but you're not responding. Yeah. Like this is all the things that fear yes. can do. So can you help me with how do we create the story that you have to have in your head in the in-betweens of the fearful moments? Because I, it's like insane to see the answers you get now that you're patient and you don't really care about the outcome yeah. it's like oh i'm so sorry i missed your email from two months ago i feel like such a jackass i don't even look at my own emails like like i feel you on a soul like i just want to give you a big hug because i know <laughs> yes. this place like so well and i think it's so relatable so i think this there's a couple things i mean i am by no means and I, people always ask me i'm like listen i am nobody's guru here i wrote a book called fear is my homeboy because it was one of the things i'll get asked on panels yeah is like what is that one thing we we don't know about you. I'm like, y'all, I'm the biggest Freddy cat you'll ever meet in your entire life. Like, this is why I wrote it. Like, this is why I feel like I'm qualified yeah. to write this book because I face it and I've done incredible things in my life because mm. I have, uh, despite doubt and despite those weird moments. So, you know, what you're really talking about is liminal space. We're not where we want to go yet. We haven't gotten the answer we want yet, but we haven't gotten an answer. So we're in this liminal, like this, this unknowing, this mm. not knowing, this like dark, icky, uncomfortable space of like uh, between nowhere and not yet. That is a really hard place to be. So number one, acknowledge it. Namaste. Cool. Number two, in moments like this, I think this is where we like phone a friend. For me, the things that have saved me the most when I get into this, like, okay, so I've sent this email. Like you, you know, you've got such a big, beautiful, I think this is why we need a big, beautiful network of mm -hmm. baddies and best friends and business owners and people who can talk us off the proverbial ledge. Cause I'm about to go Oh, dark 30 and stalk this person to the point of looking like a complete troll. Mm -hmm. Can someone talk me off the ledge? Yes, please okay. help me. So phoning a friend is always helpful for me in my like rock bottom moments or just, you know, my husband's like a natural sales guy. He's like so good at this. Mm -hmm. So he's always just like holler, chill. You know, we got to move. We got to, we got to follow up. We got to be proactive. We got to holler at what we want, but we also need to have people in, in our lives that can kind of talk us off the ledge. But also like, I think like empower yourself, be proud of yourself. Most people don't, Lori, like mm. most people don't holler at what they want. Most people don't even send the first email. Most people don't pick up the phone. Most people aren't pitching. Most people aren't putting themselves in the room. Most people aren't standing on stage. Mm. Most people aren't making the investment and tapping into their network and making moves. You know, most mm -hmm. people don't. So I think if you do and you begin, you're ahead of 90% of people who do things the same way they've always done them because that's the way they've always done them. Fear isn't the enemy, comfort is. So I think the way to get through it is to go through it, mm -hmm. you know, and to just keep moving. I haven't and figured out a shortcut. And that, like you have faith, like you, have, you there's this belief in something bigger. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always like trusting, like I have one of these things going on right now with like a stage <laughs> I want to speak on so bad and I'm like working the CEO. I'm like, mm -hmm. he needs to know we're going to holler at your dreams. I'm going to get your people like you need me, baby. Mm. And like, he's ghosted me. It's been three times and we had a call and he's in and but I haven't heard because I'm like, okay, holler. He's got a lot of things going on in his life. You are not his only. And they say it takes on average seven to 10 mm -hmm. touches to really get a response for someone. So I think patience, faith, and just like proactive persistence with swagger. Yeah. And it's going to play out. And if it doesn't, it's a divine realignment. Okay. You're lost. Like, you have to tell me lost. who after I'm like, do I know anyone? Do I know <laughs> anyone? Yes. Um, but really that is so true because there are things that Chris and I, and I'm not comparing myself to this human, but like there are things that we want to do. Yes. And I'll be like, oh my God, this person sent me seven emails. I feel so bad. I actually want to do it. But my brain is so over here yeah. that I'm like, 
And then I don't respond again. <laughs> yeah. Cars. Yeah. You get to the point where it's so, yeah, I think you could take that as even like, okay, it's an understanding. It's a knowing that, you know, listen, it's like thinking someone may not like you in an audience right. or whatever. It's like, you know, we, we really don't know what's going on with anyone. And I always think, I mean, Laura, you look at your life. I look at my life. It's like, I feel like the things I've lost or the things I've walked mm. away from as painful as some of them have been, whether it's a person or like a massive opportunity has actually always ended up being the best divine realignment every time so i like i'm just such deep faith yo i'm like okay cool where 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 are we going but i'm mm -hmm. gonna keep moving i'm gonna keep hollering at what i want i gotta let this guy know he needs me because no one else is gonna do it for me so i gotta holler at that dream mm -hmm. this is the essence of uh, my message like on keynote stages so i kind of have to be what they want me to you teach picked their a, people. You picked a tough one, Judy. I did pick a tough I, one. I feel the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. so I'm like, what, I get in this line of work, you know? But it's true. Like, I've got to I've got to be what I am ultimately going to go teach their people, mm -hmm. which is the essence of being the verb. Like, we got to make moves in life, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I think it's a beautiful question, and you're not alone. And I feel like that is such a re relatable conversation because mm. there's probably thousands of people listening right now that are just like not sending the follow up email because they're yeah. too in their head. Send the follow up email and then chill, just keep yeah. moving. It's a matter of, like you said in the beginning, doing it all the time. And I will tell you that I have had years where I got a little comfy. Yeah. Because what was once hard becomes easy. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so you have to go and do hard things again. Oh my gosh. Frequently. Lord. Or you actually get I, really unhappy. Yes. Like I am here right now. Like one of the biggest mistakes I made in 2022 as an entrepreneur. So I'm a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. I make, you know, 80% of my money uh, through speaking on stage, getting paid right. to speak on corporate stages. And I got like in the groove, you know, cause I was making some money. I was in demand. Like baby. I'm getting booked. So guess what I did? I outsourced my swagger. Mm. Now this doesn't mean that we don't bring people in to help us, of course, but I got out of the drivers. I lost control of my sales mm. process and there is no one that is going to be able to pitch or sell me. And it doesn't mean we don't have people. Help. I have a director of talent booking and of course, but I mean, I got to get on calls. I got to be pitching myself. I got to make videos. I got to, I got to get in there. I got to meet people. Right. Mm -hmm. I got to connect. And I, I stopped doing that. And Lori, like we are currently digging out of that mistake, but I could sit here and go, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's so hard. Nothing's, it's not fair. I'm so talented. And why won't anybody? Okay, holler. Cool. What'd you learn? Mm. And and how are we going to move forward? And what are you going to do differently? And thank goddess that happened because it taught you a million lessons that will actually probably walk you into a career of a lifetime because we have to um, remain in control of the most important assets we own, which is mm. the ability to position and package our services. Yeah. And so we have to sell, like we have to sell. There's really no way around it. No, there's not. I love that you had mentioned that because someone's version of your version of like getting on the phone and pitching, we have to remember, we have to try to figure out what that version is because yeah. yes, as you grow and scale, you do have to outsource things, but of there's course. always your zone of genius that is bringing either the eyeballs or the money yeah. or the talent yes. into the team. Yes. So I've done this before with social media, thinking other people could do it and just watching that freaking tank. Yeah. And it's not that I hired a bad team. It's that you took the whole like soul yeah. out of the whole reason. You took the magnet yeah. out of your oh, business. That's beautiful. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, I can outsource just about everything else, but you can't outsource yeah. how you're bringing people in or how you're like yeah. contacting you people, got making it. contact with people. No one can be you. And this is mm -hmm. the power. Um, but it's also like using that power wisely, right? Like what, what, where's my energy level at? <laughs> how mm -hmm. much energy do I have? What can I get rid of? And what is critical that I maintain at mm -hmm. least eyes over? So like, I may have a director of talent booking and she's out there. Have you heard of Holler? You got to know Holler. You got to get her stage. I see you've had so-and-so. If you love her, you love Judy. And how do we make moves? Can I get you on the phone? Can I get you on the phone? So I have people helping me or I'm using my own voice to pitch, right? Because sometimes it's powerful mm -hmm. to come from the performer and the person say, hey, or you have a warm connection. But the goal is always to get me on that call or to get me somehow at the table because I feel like once I'm at the table or once I can get on the phone with someone, you know, you start, hey, listen, when you spend a lot of money high five figures on a keynote mm -hmm. speaker, you want to know that person's going to deliver. Yes. You want to know they're not going to drop the ball. You want to know you can trust them. Can they perform? And really, truly in the speaking business, anybody that hires you, it's a direct reflection on them. So it's a trust thing. So I think I can get on the phone with someone and usually close, but I just need to be able to get on the phone and 
I just feel like that's something mm. I, I should no longer outsource. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I so, love that. Yeah, but we've got to pitch. We've got to sell. And if you can turn it into a powerful exercise and just like, I mean, my tolerance for pain though, Lori, I mean, think of all the pitching. Like I have a pretty high tolerance. I did a lot of improv theater. I studied at Second City in Chicago. So I, you know, I'm used to pain, right? Like I can fail publicly. So you have gotten, tell us about that because people listening are like, wait, you pitch yourself for money to these big stages. Like that's a whole lot of pain. But let's also talk about, meaning just that alone is a whole lot of pain. Like that's <laughs> yes. not- the, the rejection. painful and the rejection is scary. And if it works out, it's even scarier because now you're getting paid and you have to do it. Yeah. So there must be a large level of fulfillment, which I want to talk about Big in a second. Time. But I want to talk about some of the rejections that you've gotten. Can you share some of the rejection emails or anything that you've mm -hmm. gotten that have taken a hit that now you have, are so grateful for? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like I get rejected weekly. I feel like I get weekly wins too, mm -hmm. so it's good. But I, you know, gosh, I get rejected all the time. And I think they all, ugh, they all hurt, yeah. you know? But I also am in such a, I think two years ago, it would have derailed me. And it did for a minute because remember, I was a little lost and disconnected mm -hmm. from myself and my message. But now that I'm so deeply connected to where I'm going and I'm so, you know, your fortune lives in your ability to focus. Mm. And I was very on focus. Like, Lori, I was like, oh, here's what it's going to be. I'm going to do improv, but then I have a planner, but then I have a workbook. Oh, let me do disco balls. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to make a sequin jacket line. Oh, no. B -b 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 are we the same? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like hot look. Well, no wonder people are like, so she's an improv speaker, but fear. But wait, she's got disco ball. Oh, but she, I think she might be making a seat. Like, what? Like, this is just all me searching, mm -hmm. searching, searching for something outside of myself to validate myself to make me feel worthy and seen and heard and all this stuff right when really it was always inside of me I just mm -hmm. had to wake myself back up you know eight-year-old Judy had to come back to the table right <laughs> so long story short like I just that has given me such a level of confidence like I am so focused mm -hmm. on one thing and one thing only it is the verb God gave me I was born with the last name holler mm -hmm. and I don't believe I was given that last name on accident so now it's become my life's purpose to help people holler at their dreams, use their spoken word to bring dreams and goals into existence to really manifest. So now I'm like, so see what I'm saying? Now I, I know the conversations I want to have on my show, the people I want to collaborate with. I know what I want my next book to be about. I know how to write my speeches, how to perform my speeches, how to pitch myself, how to sell myself. And now even on social media, everything goes down one lane, the lane mm -hmm. of Hollering at your dreams, hollering at your dreams, calling your shot, movement, facing fear, building courage. So I think it's really a message of focus. The fo more focused you get, the braver you are because, mm. and, and the money will come. You are speaking my language. <laughs> this is literally the last two years of my life. I'm like, you need to get focused. Oh my God, I'm saying. And I was so scattered. I couldn't even tell, no matter how many masterminds I did where it's like, oh. learn your elevator pitch. Oh I my couldn't God. even get an elevator pitch because I was like, I'm too many things. I like too many. I don't know one mm. thing that I am. It felt so insane. Yeah. Especially putting a talk together on one thing. Are you kidding how me? You Impossible. Even? Impossible. <laughs> I was on a plane um, going out to the Bahamas for an event and I was sitting next to this woman. This is when I knew I had to get my life together. Mm. So this woman, she hears me talking to another woman about what I was there to go. Why are you going to the Bahamas? All these women going on a girl's trip, whatever. And this woman turns to me and she goes, so what are you here for? I'm like, actually, I'm speaking in an event. I'm like, oh, so you're a keynote speaker. What do you speak about? And we were just like talking about improv and stuff. And so at the very end of our conversation, the girl I was sitting next to goes to the bathroom and then the lady right in front of me leans over a chair and taps you on the knee. She goes, you said you were a keynote speaker. I, I kind of overheard you talking about your speaking. She goes, uh, hi, my name's Diana. I'm senior mm. vice president of insert big company. Hands me your card. She goes, tell me what you speak about again. I, I, I literally need a speaker two months from now. Tell me more. Lori, I <laughs> froze. Yeah. And I was like, well, so I, blah, blah, blah. like when I, so I can't even, I have back sweat telling you this right now. And I had been speaking pro for like four years, but I was so in this, I had lost myself. Remember, I was so disconnected. I was all over the place. I mm -hmm. was not trusting myself. I had lost my focus and I, I could barely pitch to this woman. And I'm like, okay, I think I got through it. We get up, we're leaving the plane. And I see on the seat with all of her trash is my business card. 
Oh. The business card I gave her. But you know what? Yeah. It's the best. Amen. Thank God. Yeah. Because you know what I did? I got my shit together. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, I, I got I to gotta get it together. I have got to figure this out because I am playing it safe and I'm not doing more importantly. Mm-hmm. I'm a boss. I've got a story. I'm a talent. I'm an entertainer. And shame on you, Judy, for not being able to clearly and quickly quickly articulate the dopeness that you are. Mm -hmm. So go home. What do we learn? Go home, get it together. Mm -hmm. And that rock bottom, my card in the trash of her little like champagne glass up and first, like it was like half wet. It was kind of oh, sad. They were so super good. vibey, hot you. pink, gold foil business cards. Yeah, it, it was Ugh. one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because That's of course she didn't want to call me or hire me, but I now have been able to take control, get focused, and I turned that into like the greatest gift, which allowed me to come back home to where we are today. That's the best story yeah, for good. on stage as well. I love yeah, it's that. It's a good stage story too. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, had, I had one moment like that as well. I had gotten an opportunity from a girl who worked for us and she was good friends with Oprah's right hand at the time. Oh my gosh. How does that happen? Okay. And so I got an invite that did not, should not for real, should not have happened. What was the best thing that ever happened to me? I got to go into Oprah studios and pitch her. Dope. Yeah. Kind of. Oh my God, I'm sweating. It, this was 2014 okay, or 2015 was this? before okay. my book. Wow. Like before I knew, wow. but I was going to write a book and I was like, but I'm doing the Bliss Project. Oh yeah. So I've done this big event with 500 women. Everyone should know about me. Yes. What? Like so, this is what we think, right? Yes. And that's also fine. That's yeah, just like in the course. beginning. And I was like, I've got these amazing special things that I talk about. I facilitate this room. I have incredible connection. All the things. But I did all the things. Yeah. And so I get this opportunity and she's, she's sitting in the chair. I'm in the studio, right? I'm shaking. And my husband is with me. Like he's just sitting with me because she they kind of knew like, right. whatever. When we were invited, it was like, oh, her and her husband, you should meet them. But Lori's going to, you know, talk about what she does. And so she leans back, head, her hands on head, oh, does the power move. Oh, you God. know, the leaning back in the chair, crosses her legs, looks at me like kind of down through her nostrils oh, God. <laughs> and says, so tell me why you're special. Oh, wow. (laughs) She's wanting to know what's the essence. Give me the like elevator. Yes. Oh my God. What did you do? I was all over the Uh place. It was a disaster. I had like tears in my Uh eyes, literally. And you probably feel it happening. It was awful. I like in that moment, I literally just wanted to say in all honesty, I'm not. Mm, Do you know that feeling? Yeah, I do. And I left so like... You need to figure out who you are and what you do. And and it was also just this beautiful moment of like, dial it in. And it it wasn't like I was so big on myself or ego because I absolutely still had so much fear. But I think it was just this moment of how important it is to be focused on what you do and to to clarify your Mm -hmm. message because... It's like, I couldn't explain it. So that meant no one could hear me. Oh my gosh. And yes, this little room could hear me, but it was yes. because I was putting out so much effort and I was exhausted at the time yeah, too. Yeah, see? But like this has turned into, which I'll pr- tell on more stages later. Yes. But it's turned you into one of the best stories effort. that got me clear. Yeah. The fortune lives in the focus. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the year this happened to me, same. Like I had made more money than I had ever made in my life. Mm-hmm. But my hair was falling out. I was miserable. I was scattered. I was like borderline. Should I get on like an antidepressant? This was like 2019 before the world changed, right? And I was on paper. It looked like everything was like perfect. Mm. But inside I was so, it was such a cluster, you know? So I feel you on a soul level there. And thank God it happened, right? Because Mm -hmm. it's how we were able to kind of Cat, bring her back home. Yes. Bring her back home. And it doesn't mean I've got it all figured out, but boy, we better be able yeah. as business women, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as speakers, as any maker in the world, boy, if I don't know what you do or how I can help you, how can I help you? Mm-hmm. Like, how can I hire you? How can I buy from you? So like every time I go online and I think about positioning myself as a speaker or promoting my course or whatever it may be I'm always thinking about that like Mm. if I don't share this like how will anyone know you know but again it's that focus and even taking the message of speaker school and the courses I have or the work any work the the, the anthem is always going to be hollering at your dreams like I'm kind of wrapping wrapping it up in a 
an IP bow yeah. to really help people. Like you think of Mel, five second. Well, you think of the people who yes. have the She's message. got that dialed in. You, know, Mel you think Roberts, of Brene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think of, you know, it's vulnerability. It's, you know, you, so you think of the people that are, are doing really big work in the world. They have their like anthem mm-hmm. and they may change and the way they do it may, may change. But we're going to be high five and we're going to be five, five, four, three, two, one. We're going to like, it's always going to come back to the core message, which is essentially taking Mel Robbins, for example, is the message that became the anthem that became her platform that became the blow up Mm -hmm. in the world that she is very well deserved, deserved to become, you know? So this is what, this is like the perfect segue literally into what you do. So if you've gotten, you know, this whole conversation around fear and also not being able to share exactly what you do. This is why stages are so important. Mm -hmm. And and you guys, if you're thinking of big stages, that's not just what we're talking about at all. This is every time you get on social media, if you're wondering (laughs) why your program is not selling, your content is not hitting, it's not clear. You are not being 100% authentic. You don't know who you are yet. And that's okay. Mine went on for way more years than I really hoped it would have. Like 10 more, 12 more, 15? (laughs) Still there, actually. I'm getting more and more clear. And I do think you get there and that changes too. Like you get more and more dialed in and more comfortable with who you are every single year. Wasn't until I was in my 40s, like, (laughs) until I really understood anything. I'm like, I feel like I am just getting started. Same. I I love it. I am here for it it gives me all the wisdom and the courage i have like a swagger i feel confident and like listen i'm 47 years old and i am like a graffiti suit wearing hip motivational raptress like standing on this these stages like dropping bars and lyrics and doing the work i've always really wanted to do and i'm just getting started at 47 yeah and so i think it's like oh i love the 40s and so it gets me excited about the 50s and you know i'm in this camp of like aging ambitiously and i think we can all do that and that that's going to look different for all of us, but you know, don't you count yourself out and you're Mm -hmm. right stages and being able to get clear is Mm going to help you move your business and move your products and move yourself along. Right. Whether it's an interview or a date or whatever, like Imagine sitting on a date with someone and they're like all over the board. You're like, do you even know who you are? I mean, it's the yeah, same you thing can't for, connect with someone who you doesn't can't know who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell me about what are some of the things, because we're going to talk about if you guys want to get more clear, if you want to be a better speaker and it doesn't yeah. matter if you're on stages or not. No. I, I actually think this is, you know, when I've asked successful people, what is one of the biggest needle movers in their life? They say it's been Toastmasters mm. and they may not even be speakers because yeah. they, it, t- it teaches them so much about Confidence. how to have you know, conversations for pitching, for raising money, for doing all these different things. So this is such an art that needs to be taught to everybody. What are the things that you would do again if you started your business? Okay. So first thing I would do again, if I wanted to start my speaking business, Mm -hmm. um, I would not quit my day job right away. (laughs) (laughs) You know, what's that? What's that? There's a lot of trash motivational quotes out there. One of the ones I despise the most is just jump. And then Mm -hmm. that'll catch you. (laughs) And I'm kind of like, yo, okay, hold on. Like, why do people jump out of planes? Because they have a parachute on the back. Exactly. Like, I'm not jumping with this. So if anybody's listening, whether you're starting any sort of business, like if you can keep your day job, baby, keep it. I kept mine keep for Keep your three. net. Yeah, keep it lets you net. have more fun on the trapeze. Oh my like, God, it lets you jump and play yeah. and you're not as stressed. And how am I going to get insurance? And like all the things that you have to figure out along the way. So the first thing I would, I would definitely do again is, you know, I loved, I side hustled for three mm. years. I saved money and I just honed my craft. Uh, number two, I sp- because of that, I was able to speak for free Mm. as much as I could or really low fee. And I would recommend doing that again, because you're going to get number one reps, 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 reps. And you know this, I've watched. I didn't get paid till just recently. It's incredible. You get better and better and better every time you perform. This is reps, right? It's incredible to watch. So it gives you reps, but also make sure anytime I did, and this is what I talk about in my course, which is like the business of keynote speaking. If I was speaking for free or anytime I, I did do that, I always had a contract and I made sure it was, I still contracted myself because it's Mm -hmm. still, I'm an asset. I'm still giving you my time and my energy. And yeah, we're doing that pro bono, but here's what we're agreeing to as concessions Mm. in trade for that. So I made sure every pro bono event I did was mutually beneficial by way of, I would ask for lists so I could get emails. Mm -hmm. I would ask for photos, video. I'd either be bring in my own photographers, videographers, or use theirs. I would get access to um, testimonials, logos, social media, street cred. Like you see Mm -hmm. yourself on stage, just gives you some like 
street cred. And so um, I would definitely recommend doing that again, but put a contract in place mm-hmm. and make sure it's very clear that we are going to get testimonies. We are going to get logos. We are going to get lists, whatever you agree upon, do that. And then I think I would absolutely do the one thing that single handedly grew my keynote speaking business. I think this is one of the juiciest things I teach in my course speaker school. So if you are listening right now mm-hmm. and you want to be a speaker, turn the volume up. Okay. Cause this is how I started my business, grew it into a paid revenue generating business. Every gig I went to, whether it was a free stage or a low paid stage at the beginning, I brought these hot pink forms with me mm. and the hot pink form had three very important questions on it. Number one, would you like the toolbox from today's presentation? If so, please print your email here and we will send it to you. Boom, grow in my list. Mm. Staying connected to the community. Question number two is the one that literally built my business single-handedly. And at times I still do this today because we're finding QR codes don't translate. People Mm. are just not scanning them. And I don't know, I think people just are onto us. (laughs) So they don't wanna wanna be spammed or scanned. And so we're just trying to figure this out. But anyway, the forms. The second question was, do now keep in mind they've just heard me speak Mm -hmm. and i'm good on stage i have a great talk even when i was coming up i knew what i was doing (laughs) so they're motivated they're inspired they're ready to rock question two do you know anyone who could benefit from this presentation Mm. if so put your email here contact info and we'll follow up third question anything else you want to share so your girl will be we collect all the mm. hopping forms. I mean, I'd be speaking at the time, 800 people, 700 people. I'd have some big audiences in the yeah. big day. So I get on my Southwest flight, going home with my stack of hot pink forms and I'm hustling with my little cocktail. I'm putting <laughs> all the emails in before I had an yeah. assistant or anything. I'd put all the emails into my CRM and then I'd flag the leads, flag the leads mm. and single handedly that one. And then they'd go into my CRM. We would create a lead and we'd hustle the gate. And I mean that with love, like we'd work for it. We'd follow up. We'd send notes. Can I get you on the phone with Judy? And I would say if I did an event with a hundred people, I mean, spin business is what we call it in the business, you know, so speaking, turning into the next stage, mm. the, the paid opportunity. If I spoke to 100 people, at least 80 people were filling out. I mean, our ROI on those forms being filled out is almost 100%. And I would say from a lead perspective, we get 20, 30, 40% people dropping leads in there. And maybe we convert 10 to 20 of them, 10 to 20% of them. But at you know, $7,500, $10,000 a pop, which was my kind of going rate, you're starting to build a business. You're getting them while they're hot, which is the and most important. And I'm getting them while they're hot. Because it's not going to happen later when you send. It's not yeah. going to happen later. And we are using QR codes and other things now, and it's just not translating mm-hmm. into the spin business. That really is how, I mean, that's how you book your business yeah. is you turn one opportunity and leverage it to book the next 10. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, even these days, if it's the, if it's a smaller, the arenas, you can't really pass out happy yeah. forms, but we if wish. it's a small enough room, we're doing it yeah. because we book business and that is the sign of a good talk, not the standing ovation. Those are great. You know, you've got a baked talk when you are done speaking and someone says to you, here's my card. You've got to come to my organization. Mm. That's when you know you've got a bookable talk and that's how you build a speaking business. So mm. what would you not do again? We kind of talked about this. I would not compare myself. Mm. I, I spent way too much time comparing myself to Valentino Girl <laughs> and to other performers. Same. I would same, just same. tighten up the blinders. Mm-hmm. They put blinders on those horses for a reason when you're running races. And, you know, we have to, we just, you know, we have to stay, stay you know, listen, when you're getting started, you're going to, of course, look to people for inspiration and a way because you've never done it be- before. But I think when inspiration turns into comparison and potentially catfishing yourself, you're, you're in trouble. So I wouldn't do that again. I wasted so much time and money. That's all I did. I sold all those Valentinos. <laughs> <laughs> they went to her sister's closet. I was going to say, do you still have them? They're <laughs> gone. I got rid of them all. That box is of Valentinos I that hurt Valentino. my feet right now. Just, they're going back. It's fine. Yeah. It wasn't my vibe. <laughs> they're, they're great for like, but it just wasn't Trust my Trust me. I know. They're, you know what I mean? I've only found one pair that's very they're comfortable. Not comfortable. Yeah, totally. You have to be comfortable on stage. And you have to be comfortable. And yeah. I love a stage shoe. I just would rather have a more edgy stage shoe. You know, I got Trust a me. Edgy and also, right if you're a new speaker, do not buy the highest shoe. You actually do need to be more connected to the ground yeah. when you're new, especially because especially when you're new. Yeah, you have to feel grounded or it will not make you think clearly. Yeah. It's be very crazy. Look good. Yes. Just be comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
there's nothing worse than like pulling up or no. seeing someone on a big screen with adjusting their outfit or not. You can tell when someone isn't comfortable in their bones. Yeah, it's it's so it's uncomfortable. It's, it's been uncomfortable for me in certain outfits. And I'm like, okay, that's so distracting. Okay, tell me about speaker school. Okay, so speaker school is my online course. It is on demand. It is self-paced and it is your opportunity to sort of get me as your mentor. So I am an active keynote speaker. I am on the road, in the field, on the stages. So I don't have the bandwidth or the space to do like Mm -hmm. private one-on-one coaching. So this is my way to answer the number one DM and email and question I get, which is how do I become a speaker? Well, can I pick your brain? Will you be my mentor? And I want to say yes to everybody, but I can't because I'm on the stage. So I created a course called Speaker School. Mm -hmm. She is such a vibe. She's on demand, self-paced. You get me as your mentor. You get live. I think one of the most popular things lately has been the live calls that Mm -hmm. everybody gets access to. So I jump on once a month and you get to hear from from my keynote speaking friends, lawyers, mm-hmm. agents, um, people who are in PR and pitching about the biz, which are like mini master classes mm. in the master class. And then it's yours for life. The other thing I love about it is that you pay once and you get it for life. So as we make updates or torque the content or drop in new videos, you get that. And then I think last, you get to learn from a pro someone in the Mm. field and you get access to my keynote. So I put my recordings of my actual talks into the platform and I like coach to them. So Mm. I instruct, I'll pause the video and be like, okay, do you see what happened here? I lost power. Or did you see what happened here? Boom, this happened. Here's how I handled it. Here's Mm. what I do in tech check to make sure when this happens, I'm set up for success. So it's literally contracts and things to be looking out for on stage, things to be looking out for before you get on stage, after you get off stage, like just the inside insider scoop of a decade's worth of experience on stage doing this like full time for a living. And I'm one of those weird unicorns that like I was like in speech meets, I was like baby keynote speaker. And so I just kind of always knew I wanted to be a performer Mm. and an entertainer and a professional speaker. So I kind of share the business of that with the people who invest in the course. And I think last thing, whether you want to speak professionally or use it as a tool to grow your business The stage looks real different these days. Mm. So are you ready for it? Are you pitching? Do you have that elevator pitch so your card isn't in a trash can when you leave the plane? Are you focused? Can you confidently articulate what you do? How do you slay the stage when you get it? What do you do on the other side? How are we leveraging opportunities? How are we locking it up with the contract? Right, You're, You're a perishable item. So are you protecting yourself, right? And so whether you want to do a full time or, you know, as an entrepreneur, there, there are tools to the trade that I have had to learn sometimes the very hard way. Mm. And um, speaker school teaches you all of that. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to go through it yourself. No, learn some of me. it. You will take my pain, yeah, exactly. take my pain and my lessons and my failures, exactly. and go turn it into uh, shape, save time, save money, save resources. Plus, it's a whole vibe. You know, mm. we did a kind of masterclass style, and um, it's personal uh, development, you guys. It is. Like, it's it's just it's the biggest person. Stay anything stage is the biggest personal development you will experience in your yes. entire life. It just is. It is, and I think it's crowded. Mm-hmm. You know, the course space can feel crowded. Who do you trust? And you know, we talk about this in the. Speech speaking business, you know, you get this, like there's a lot of poser nation out there. Mm -hmm. People saying they've got more experience than they do. People selling big courses about the business of speaking specifically, and they've never made no disrespect, but they've never made more than $2,500 a speech. Yeah. Like, so you mean to tell me they've never spoken to a room more than like 500 people. I'm like, there's a big, there is a, there is a, the the things you learn when you do it professionally, just help you accelerate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no poser nation over here. It's the real deal, real advice in the holler way. And I'm so proud of it. And she's mm. just getting started. I mean, she's only a year old. Yeah. So um, I'm really proud of her. And we've got a really dope alumni so far. So more to come. My first course. Yeah. We'll see. But I'm really proud of her. That's so exciting. Yeah, thanks. Well, I know that you have withheld some bonus content as well that we're going to give in just a little Ooh, bit. And that is going to be, that's going to be one thing to do to holler at your dreams, which means make them happen. Yeah. We move them our forward, shot. call our shots. You, the courage to face your fears and use the power of your spoken word to bring dreams and goals into existence. We got to holler. Listen to that calling mm. card. We could have said that on the airplane. Now I got a pitch. <laughs> Right? Exactly, exactly. Lori. All right. Where can we find you, follow you, all the things? Okay. So, I mean, my favorite social media is always Instagram mm-hmm. at Judy, J U D I. 
holler the verb h-o-l-l-e-r oh my goodness my website judyholler.com and speaker schools there as well on my website we'll link that all up to you guys all you have to do is go to the show notes and we'll have all your fun stuff down there and like i said Mm. bonus content but wait there's more but wait there's more all you have to do is go down to show notes and click on the bonus content and we are going to send that to you so Mm. thank you so much for coming on i'm so grateful for you same ah you guys we will see you on the next episode bye everyone (laughs) 